I mean, what happened really, mate? So you left your wife for a Ukrainian refugee uh, and, and you wrote yeah. a song about it? <laughs> right, I'll, I'll explain from my terms. Yeah, um, go on. First of all, we weren't actually married. Um, she changed her name by a deed poll, um, just so we had the same surname on the birth certificates. Um, but there was a lot more things underlining um, before, obviously, we went to the media, media started picking up on things. Um, and a lot of it really was down to, um, I'd, I'd say, domestic abuse. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, but, the, you know, what the media's put out there, it's not the full story and it's not the truth by any any account, really. Tell me the full story, because, look, so, I, so I'm, I'm like everyone else in this country, right? I, I read that news story just, just like most people, right? And what the news story was, was that you'd asked or invited, I suppose, a Ukrainian refugee into your home. Yeah. That conveniently happened to be quite a good-looking woman, and then rather conveniently after that, you'd shortly left your wife and kids for her. But there's more to it than that, as far as you're saying. Of course this, yeah. I mean, um, when the article went out on the news, they posted that I'd only known this, this Ukrainian refugee for 10 days. Um, that's factually incorrect. You know, it was video calling for the whole four months before before that, when her visa was um, in process. Um, I followed Sophia from when she left Ukraine to Poland, when she went to, from Poland to Germany, and she encountered a lot of issues. Now, one of them included a guy in Germany, um, maybe around six years old, that offered to become her sponsor. Now, when she'd gone to his home at around two o'clock in the morning, he'd lit candles, give her champagne and, and tried obviously advancing against her. When she's rejected these advances, he's then thrown into the streets and she's been living rough um, in Germany and moving from hostel to hostel and things like that. Um, and she also developed an eye infection while she was over in Germany. So I've been supporting her throughout all of this, um, looking after her, a video mm. calling her, showing her the family. Um, and, and what I can work out, everything was going well. Um, when she arrived in the UK, um, I, I paid for her plane to get to come over, um, took her to the family, and I thought, you know, that, that we're us doing our duty as humanitarians to look after, you know, a woman fleeing a war. Uh, but obviously it's not gone that way from from when she was there due to new just, reasons. Just, just be honest with, you, be, be, with me, mate. Uh, man to man, did you fancy her before she moved yeah. in? Uh, no, to be honest with you, um, I didn't even know what she looked like until we started video calling. I just knew once this war were out there, I wanted to help anybody from Ukraine. Now, I was looking online because there was a government scheme, Homes for Ukraine, where you could essentially put your details on there and what you can offer. Um, but I found the process to be far too slow, and I was seeing daily on Sky News about, you know, the atrocities, the war crimes that were going on. Um, so I wanted to speed things up, essentially, um, to take care of a Ukrainian. I didn't care if it was male or female. I didn't care for, you know, age or anything like that. I just knew I could only look after one due to um, the room size that I had available. OK, look, fair enough. Can I ask why you've now chosen to release a song about it just purely because obviously look i've never yeah. met your your original missus as it oh, were course, or indeed yeah. or indeed your current, current one of course but um I, I, it it could be seen as a bit look you know you've you've left her for a ukrainian woman you've got a couple of kids and now you're releasing a song yeah. about it is that kosher really mate you know uh, no, basically, when I spoke to the media and I told them all this, you know, the, the true version of offence, they've took snippets of what the media want to put out there. So obviously, I understand the media is a business and they want obviously stories that people are going to be interested in. But I, I feel so strong on myself that people deserve to know the truth, not what they read in the media. And this has opened my eyes a lot. And it, it's shown to me that when you speak to the media or when I, I'm reading the media now, is that the truth or is it? You know, snippets of the truth. Now, every time I was explaining to different medias the true scale of events and why we were left, um, they, were, they were putting partial stuff in there. So I thought, if I release a song, it's something I've always done as like a hobby. Um, mm. Then it's direct from me. There's no editing. There's no cutting things out. Um, and, and that's the reason why, why I put this song out there. Now, there's a lot of legalities why the media couldn't post what I was telling them. Um, which is, you know, it's understandable. Um, but they painted a picture like Sophia's come over here, she's met me, we've known each other 10 days, and I've Like she's a home wrecker. The yeah, the, 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 the poor trail is as though she's a bit of a home wrecker. Is it? Can I ask, has your, has your um, ex partner now got a restraining order out against you? Um, well, basically, uh, I used to see my kids pick up once, two times a week. Um, and when I'd go up there, she'd have her and her friends there trying to intimidate Sophia, to try to come up to the car, causing damage to my vehicle. Um, and because of this, I said to her, OK, if you want to play games like this, I will apply for a court order, um, which I did. So I, um, 
I applied for a court order, sent paperwork to her house, and when I've done this, it, she then applied for this restraining order, just full of lies, trying to explain that um, I've been abusive to and things like that. So when I went to court, um, I then explained to the court that, you know, I, I haven't been to her house for two months. She's not allowed me to see the kids. If you want to give her that restraining order, you're more than welcome to do so. It won't affect my life if it helps her sleep at night. Um, you know, it won't make no difference to my life. I don't contact her. The only contact I do need is obviously to see my children, and that is that. I've got look. I've got to be honest with you. I mean, the the press portrayal of this obviously did not reflect you in the best light, right? Okay, and I think you you know that as well as you you know that as well as anyone. Okay, I, I must say, obviously, I don't necessarily. It's not my place to agree or disagree with what you've done. It's your life, mate. And, and let's be honest, no one's squeaky clean, Tony. Right? No one is squeaky clean at all. So there is that.